please help me welcome the director of the film, Evgeny Afinevsky, to the stage. And Evgeny, you also have a special guest if you'd like to introduce your special guest and then we'll start the conversation. And I would love to invite, I'm a little bit, again, getting into emotions. I would love to invite Dmitro Orest Kazatsky here to the stage. <laughs> Due to this amazing person, we can see what's happened in Mariupol. And if, in certain point, Dmitro, please join us. Guys, this guy deserves applause. Thank you. I think sometimes camera can be a weapon. But in that case, camera saved a lot of lives. So thank you for doing what you did. Thank you for telling to the entire world about people who've been under the Mariupol as a steel plant. Thank you for bringing and documenting the history and helping us filmmakers to tell it to the rest of the world. Thank you. So Evgeny, I wanted to start by asking you, I mean, this is such an incredible feat of filmmaking, as I was mentioning. I mean, Evgeny, films are usually made and edited and finished well in advance of premieres. I mean, Evgeny's been working on this pretty much like, not to this moment, but till very recently. And I just wanted you to talk a little bit about what the process was in terms of even just collecting this footage and bringing this together, and also what compelled you after your first film that was eight years ago to continue that process and continue telling the story. I think um, when I finished Winter on Fire in 2014, the rest of the world kind of not was aware that the war started there. We who've been in Ukraine, who've been filming, uh, who've been in Ukrainian people who were living there, they were aware about the situation. So in 14, 15, when we were crafting Winter on Fire, we still were filming also annexation of Crimea, also Donetsk airport, Tibaltsev, Lavaisky, Katyol, and many events that happened there in 14 and 15. One of the last cards of Winter on Fire was actually that the war started, and we specifically pointed how many lives in 14 and 15, 2014, 2015, it's already took. Eight years passed. I was kind of leaving the subject of Ukraine to many other great filmmakers who are doing great movies about Ukraine. I'm talking about Ukrainian filmmakers. And as you know, I did Syrian movie, I did Francesco that last year, you guys hosted me here. So I did different movies since that. But when in February 24th, events unfolded in front of eyes of my friends in Ukraine, when eight years left and passed, and Putin's crimes not were punished, nobody stopped him from killing people in Ukraine, I realized that I need to dive back into my archives and with all my team, to start to tell this story. And literally, in the first few days, I initiated my team in Ukraine that was working with me in Winter on Fire. I initiated people already in March who were working with me in Hollywood. Wils Nidarek, Jasha Klebe, Angus Wall, all original team of Winter on Fire is in this movie. And that's how we started. It was really not easy because the events were unfolding. Nobody knew where it's all going. In March, we were trying to assess if it's going to be something fast or if it's going to be a long-term war. And we were trying to understand what to expect. But already in March, we were filming and documenting the history. And in April, we started to put it in the computers. At the beginning, it started with two editors, then three editors. By June, it was nine editors, same time, five in Ukraine, two in Europe, and two in US. Uh, literally 24-7 uh, crafting the movie. And uh, some of the people in the industry even not were believing that, listen, you know the story, the people not were believing that it's possible to be done in short time. But I think the urgency to tell the story, the urgency to stop this madness and to educate people was our motivation. Because I witnessed how literally every day 
a lot of people, innocent people dying. So for me, it was the urgency to bring this story as quick as possible and to educate the world and not to allow again kind of neglect the situation of the war. And like Rafaela just said, this war happening today and innocent people dying. And I think that was the urgency to do this. And that's why the today's technology and the great minds and creative minds like my team and the great filmmakers also in Ukraine all together combined strengths to do this movie in less than six months. Dimitro, and tell us if, if we need translation, but your images of the children were incredible. And it's what the consul said, there's one thing about policy, but another thing about seeing documentary and real footage of real people and situations. And I think that's what really changes hearts and minds. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what made you start filming in that situation. Images детей, которые были в фильме, они очень... Okay, okay. Yeah. No, then slow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we will be translating him, so I ask him to be slow. На той момент майже не залишилося якихось представників ЗМІ в Маріуполі. In that moment, it's, it was no more uh, anybody who was representing the media in Mariupol. І ми розуміли, що ми от прислужба полку Азов, ми таке останнє джерело інформації, останній голос, який може показувати світу правду. And we as the uh, as Azov regiment, we were the only ones who realized that we can tell to the world all what's happening there. Ми бачили кожного дня смерті багатьох цивільних, розрушені будинки, і ми хотіли показати цю страшну правду у всьому світу. We were observing every day how the civilians were dying and how the buildings were destroyed, and we wanted to show to the entire world all these horrible truths. І це була наша найголовніша місія показати світу те, що відбувається в Маріуполі, тому що ми мали задокументувати ці злочини проти українського народу в Маріуполі. And for us it was the main goal and the mission to show what's happening in Mariupol in that days. Тому це була наша головна місія. Yeah. It was our important mission to document and to bring it to the entire world. We thank you. Okay, excuse me, and we're having a conversation on the stage and we do not excuse need me? public disruption. We, oh my heavens. God bless New York City. There's always one. All good. Okay. All right, okay, we, oh my heavens. Okay, excuse me, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. We're having a. We're having. We're. Excuse me. Excuse me. If you would like to have a conversation with us, you can have a conversation after the film. Thank you. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. They have no idea. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. Thank you. All right, if you could please leave the theater, and I'm sure some people will help you with that process. Thank you so much. As we can see, there is a lot of, and that's why movies matter, that's why truth matters. That's why documenting what's happening in the world matters for precisely what you have all witnessed at this moment. People will want to silence people. We're not here to have that. We're here to have conversations. Thank you for being here. And I'm sorry for that disruption. We have a few minutes left. And what I would really like to do is actually focus on this film. And Evgeny, and yes, if you would something. like to. Yes, yeah. please. I think. With every century, we have dictators. 1812 brought to us Napoleon, who tried to have imperialistic desire to take over Europe. 
1939-1945 brought us Hitler. I guess this century brought us somebody who is trying right now to execute his ambition to take over Europe world. And unfortunately, this person using not just a typical weapon, camera became a weapon. As you saw right now in the movie, this world is not just being killed by the bombs and people silenced, people being poisoned by the cameras. We witnessed even in our country how the Goebbels playbook, take a lie big enough, repeat it over and over, and it becomes truth. And there is another famous quote from the same book, truth is an enemy of the state. I think for Putin, it's a huge thing to use this playbook. From 2011-12, the Russian Duma parliament passed a law and they started to close one by one every voices of freedom. Today we know there is no, there is zero journalists who are able to say something against Putin. So at the end of the day, camera became a weapon and propaganda everywhere in the world is really a warfare. Today we just witnessed how people who not have any connection to the subject, people who not have any relationship to the story, able to be poisoned, exactly like many of my friends, personal friends, being poisoned through these last couple of years and how our country been divided. I think that's a real importance of this movie. And thank you, Rafaela, for helping to put kind of uh, order here, because you know what? You can't explain to these people because they're not ready to listen to the logic and to the sense. We just saw the reality of Russia. I interviewed a lot of people in Russia. You know, I interviewed, everybody remember Marina Avsyanikova who jumped into the uh, newscaster's booth with the poster. I interviewed her twice. You know what she said? To get to this booth, you need to pass four different levels of the military. Four. Inside of the news booth, newscaster, you have a policeman sitting and protecting the newscaster. That's the truth, how the Russia protecting the truth. So I'm lucky that I, who born in different country, live in America, that allowed me to execute my freedom of speech and freedom of artist. Thank you for Rafael and her husband who created this festival and giving a voices to the artists from all over the world, for the artists like Dmitro or myself, who not born in this country, but able to document history and preserve it, that it's not will be rewritten. I, as somebody who born in different country, witness how the history is being rewritten. What is important to preserve this history for the future. Thank you. And with the time that we have left, I, I was hoping you could bring us up to speed about what's happening now, and even more importantly, what this audience of people want to learn more, if they want to help, if there's anything you would suggest. As we know, Ukraine is advancing, and we're really happy to see that the evil can be defeated, and defeated very soon. But what is important to remember the world can only be united around Ukraine and help Ukraine to win this. Because like in the history in the 13th century when Ukraine defended entire European Union from Chinggis Khan, uh, you saw it in the movie, I think right now Ukraine is defending the democracy, democracy of Europe. And I think what is important that we all being able to be united, united like people on Maidan in 2013-14 and they won. They proved that the will of the people is much more powerful than the, just a government representative who trying to steer the direction of the country. So I think it's important to get out of here and tell to the people about the situation in Ukraine. Try to engage them in a proper conversation to, first of all, to do a fact check to anything that is on the Facebook or Twitter or anything else because unfortunately, like we just saw, there is so much propaganda and so much like somebody was saying fake news, I think it's important to remember these things, that it's a warfare and we are in a war. 
We are in a war in the media space, and we are sometimes not understanding, but we are involved into this. So it is important to remember this. And I would love everybody to try to support Ukraine in different ways. Do this screening, because the movie is coming out. Do our conversations in the schools. Try to support different Ukrainian NGOs that are working in the ground, because Ukraine needs this help. But the most important, to stay united. It is, uh, on Maidan, it was a poster with big drop of water. And it says, each of us is a drop of water, but together, we're in ocean. So together, we can win this thing, we can stop this World War Three that are literally already standing in a door, and if we will again neglect, neglect the uh, evidence of this war, who knows what will happen tomorrow. We neglected it for eight years, what happened, we're seeing right now, entire world is engaged. So right now is very important moment not to neglect this. As much as we're thinking that it's far, no. It is not, because who were thinking that in the middle of the Europe, second largest country can be really in ruins, that somebody will attack them in the middle of night and really unleash these deadly weapons. So I think what is important to remember, be united and spread the word and support Ukraine. Thank you, everybody, for coming and spending your time with us this evening. Thank you so much to Evgeny and Dimitro for all your work, for the images. We hope you watch some more movies at Doc NYC and continue this conversation. Thank you so much. Ukraine, there you go.